Krim here with another episode of Baldur's Gate. Last time we left on a literal cliffhanger. We uh, have to deal with this statue, this chest, and a perception check and a religion check over there, if I recall correctly. To all get one thing that is actually somewhat part of Shadowheart's story. If we don't do this, then she kind of doesn't tell us a certain part of her backstory. And it takes a while for them to just go ahead and force it onto us. Like, whenever we go into the Underdark, she'll force feed it to us. But we need... A magical Thank you. Seal. So that's important. If we don't that. pass this, I don't think we can ever unlock it. Because there's a certain thing that we have to do in order to unlock it. We have to read a prayer sheet in front of it. But if we don't know that we need to unlock it, then they don't realize they need to do anything with the, the page. So failed that perception check. Thank you. Now, I need guidance. So you don't have guidance anymore. You have guidance. Go ahead and give me guidance. I think this is a religion or a history check. Either way, I don't have anything in those. So, we're going to need all the help we can get. I will quick save right here because this is one that can, like, completely bug the thing and make it to where you can't do this. Old prayer sheet. So, what is the DC? Me of school. Where's the DC on that? Alright, so I was one off. See, this is one thing the game does to me all the time. It lowballs me. I get one under what I always need, I notice. Like, about 80% of the time, I always end up with one Action. under what I need. Reaction. So, go ahead and give it to yourself. And now you try it. Some poem or prayer. Me. I wish we had bardic inspiration right now. A prayer to really? Dear old Come on. Saluna. Adorable. And I don't know if Shadowheart would even do this because she doesn't like Saluna. There is work to do. Right, she luckily got it. Marked with the same symbol as the chest. What did she even roll? I'll she rolled a 20 on that. And it. Oh, good. She actually mentioned that, that the uh, chest is the same as that. We're two. So, yeah, I don't think she actually would have mentioned that if she didn't know about the chest. So, there is that. If we continue up this way, we'll end up encountering the owl bear again, and that will cause a fight. Now, if we had, like, invisibility or whatever, we could sneak in here and loot a body that hasn't loaded in yet. That has some armor on it that gives you extra attack to undead and also take extra damage from beasts. It's not that useful in the grand scheme of things. We're already past the point where the undead actually matter. So if anyone actually interacts with this chest here, they will get hit by a trap. A very nasty trap that I don't want to experience because it can one-shot your characters if they're too squishy. This chest, you if you try and steal it, like picking it up or whatever, or do darkness on it or any magic, it will go ahead and trigger the trap as well. So it's really really nice but this is the only location in the game that has something like this i wish we could use it for other things unfortunately we can't so go ahead and save we don't really have to do like a save scummy thing we just have to read it and all that but i'm curious about what's inside and unfortunately shadow heart really there's magic guarding this thing did you not just use this Clearly. Why are you not using the thing? You said that you'd have to recite the poem in order to get in there. So I think Shadowheart just does not want to do this. What a charmer. So why don't you try it? There we go. So it has to be Might someone else. Because Shadowheart doesn't actually want to recognize that prayer. Even though she passed the check to realize that that's how you open it, someone else has to actually read the thing. Good to know. She's lucky she didn't take any damage. Like, normally that can just completely cripple your character. You should leave it. Or even just. I'm gonna take it, it with me because I'm curious what's inside. I've never actually opened it up because of this interaction. I think we get some disapproval with her, but that's not very pressing considering the fact that we get so much approval with her just by playing the game. But why? This rubbish is an offering to Saluna. At best, it's worthless. At worst, who knows? Could be cursed. I don't Do not think so. trifle with that moon witch or her trinkets. Only trouble will follow. I didn't know that we were playing Elden Lord or whatever. Whatever that game's called. That I need to get around to playing. Uh, Barbarian Intimidation. Good. Well, let's go ahead and try this. I am curious. See if I can intimidate my own ally. 
By the way, I'm not gonna romance her in this playthrough. Fine. Perhaps you can sell them for a couple of coins. See what's inside? When the wearer has 50% HP or less, they don't provoke attacks of opportunity. That is really useful. And an idol of Saluna and a Saluna, right? Cool. And we didn't even get, like, uh, we didn't get the negative influence or whatever. Huh. I, I thought that uh, you normally, like, get negative influence, but I guess she was just so intimidated by us that she doesn't even care. Where's the right? There it is. Go and read this. Worthless. Yeah, worthless to you, but to other people, it's pretty useful. And it might be worthless to... Sorry, it might be worth something to you eventually. Depending on how we play the game. Okay, so we don't really need to go out this way or do anything since I'm closest to the Blighted Village. But before that, we're going to go ahead and rest. We haven't rested in a very long time. Oh, let's go to the Blighted Village. Just so that we can not have a cave interaction. And then go to camp. So yeah, we haven't gone to camp in a very long time and rested in a very, very long time. So we're going to go ahead and leave a quick save and go ahead and do this. Now that amulet, I'm thinking about just instantly putting that on. But who should get that? Who should get that? Maybe... I'm ready. Maybe you. You should get that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yours. Oh, and while we're at it, because oh, I, I know how much you like Saluna, there you go. Enjoy that. Damn, it's good to be alive. And I don't need this on me either. There you go. Have fun with that. Maybe you can tell me about it later. Yeah. Hey. But yeah, we're not gonna romance Shadowheart in this. All's well, I hope. Aside from the obvious. Yeah, those uh, murals in the grove. Something about them seemed to catch your eye. What can I say? They were eye-catching. Consider me an art lover. There's something you're not telling me. I'm sure of it. I don't know what you mean. No, I think you know exactly what I mean. It's nothing, really. We can just keep on intimidating her. Ugh. Ugh, uh, I got her selected. I'm curious. I'm curious, and I get... I get, like, extra chances at it. I'm not gonna get it. Not with that. We're gonna use the inspiration. We're gonna waste it on this. Oh, we have four from, I guess, opening that chest before. Fine, I'll tell you. So long as it spares me your ham-fisted threats. You're welcome. I worship Shah, the mistress of the night. It is my holy mission to oppose Saluna, her teachings and her followers. <laughs> It hurts. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. It's really not that big of a deal to me. So I actually really like Char in Baldur's Gate in general. Baldur's Gate 3, they dropped the ball with Char. Like, she is nothing like she's supposed to be in the tabletop stuff. So I don't really know how they Larian thought about him, but it's like Larian, they got to the certain point while playing Baldur's Gate. They played Baldur's Gate 1 and maybe part of 2, and just never messed with 3. Like, not 3-3, three, three, but like, uh, the throwing a ball, or any of the side stuff. So it's, I don't know, the lore is a little mixed up, and the tabletop lore is also mixed up, and Neverwinter stuff is mixed up. But Shar in general is actually, even though she's somewhat of an evil god, the followers of Shar are usually pretty mild and tame. They, like, keep to themselves for the most part. But here it's like they're just a bunch of death-hungry cultists that want to just purge everyone. So, eh, it's a little iffy. I'll decide whether to make a fuss about it or not. Hard to trust anyone who's holding out on me. I personally don't care about Shar, though. It's cool. I don't agree with joining the Shar worshippers. You could have told me, how long have you been keeping this secret? I don't care who you worship. We have bigger problems. Okay, probably select that one. Um, normally we have, like, a passive one, where it's like, cool, you could have just mentioned it, it's fine. You could have told me how long you've been keeping this a secret. Forever, ideally. And you assume too much about what I can and cannot tell. Secrecy is everything for Shah's children. Not really. It is our code, our creed, our shield. I even keep secrets from myself. I had my memories suppressed so that nothing I know could be used against the Dark Lady. 
Once I prove myself, my memories will be restored. I'm not sorry I kept this from you. Not one bit. Though, perhaps that might change. If you can show an open mind. Okay. Let's see how open my mind can be then. Tell me more. We'll discuss this later. I don't know how I feel about this. Thank you for telling me at least. I can't trust you. Yeah. Alright. As I said, Shah is my patron. My mistress. Goddess of darkness and loss. I assume you've heard of her? A bit. Remind me. Honestly, the faith is your own concern. I won't judge you one way or the other. Probably that one. Curious. Most are afraid of my lady. I think I did well by joining you. Most agreeable company. Then give me some influence boost. Like, for real. Stop holding out on me on this stuff. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. So you knew more than you were letting on before? I hope you'll be more honest in the future. Nah. Uh, why would Shard's subject do such a thing? What caused it to harm you? To hurt you? It's difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me. Punishing me. Testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. It's pretty much just someone with amnesia trying to remember who they are. They get like painful episodes in their head, but this one is like magical. Whenever she's not going on the right path, she just gets hit with a, a prong to force her back on the path that Shara wants her to be on. So it's pretty worthless, to be honest. Why would Shara subject you to such a thing? I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. Mm hmm sure. How can you manage living with such a thing? It's less difficult than you might imagine, when you can't remember life without it. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Shah. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. But not if it's self-inflicted. That doesn't have any meaning, then. Okay, so you knew more than you were letting him on before. I hope you'd be more honest in the future. This might actually get me, um, negative rep. I'll try my best. But secrecy is ingrained in me. Lady Shah considers it greater protection than any shield or armor. Now, secrecy keeps you blind. Then you end up falling into pitfalls. Okay, want to know more about what's happening with you? You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? She took me in when no one else would. Without her, I wouldn't be alive. She's my mother. She nurtures me, cares for me, loves me. Don't believe the lies the Salunites tell. What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? Yeah, that's about it. Okay, you have to point an icord, night orchid out to me next time we pass some. It's a deal. No, I can't. Quite literally, I mean. With my memories suppressed, I can't betray Shah's secrets. But I can't remember much of myself either. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shah will reward me when I succeed. Yeah, whatever you say. Fine. What's on your mind? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and check some stuff. I want to see What's what next? everyone's influence is at. So you're neutral with me. Careful, I bind. Yeah, pretty much everyone is neutral. No, actually, you're fair. You're close enough to the green zone to be fair. And you're also fair. Alright, we're not going to go around talking to everyone because that would be a little bit of a waste of time right now. We will just glance at what they have to say and we can come back later. If they have interactions right now, like, everyone will probably be like, she's a worshiper or Shar. Oh my goodness. And that's one thing. So we'll take care of that real quick. Yes? Yeah, you have nothing to say to me. Speak. You probably have something to say. Nope, nothing. I figured you'd had something to say about the um, the tiefling that we found. Here I am. How can I help? And nothing from you. So we're gonna go ahead and also hire a companion. We have enough gold to do it. And what we want right now is an alchemist. Not this one. Nor this one. Writing the balance. Beyond mortal realm, they bear. For a mere pittance of coin, most willingly, forsooth. Their passions doth. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. My sir, very well. Impossible. Thy party is. F okay, well, let's go ahead and go over here and ditch you for now. Just for now. Need something? Oh, Stay darling, in camp. I'm hurt. I it sound. And there goes Cat's Grace, but we don't really need it considering Fate. we're about to rest. Dost thou require a new very well? Choose. And I think this person can just stay in my camp. I don't need him on me all the time. We are going to go for a wizard. We can find one. Wizard, wizard, wizard. Are you the wizard? You're the wizard. Really wish I could customize these characters, but you can't. Venture forth. Oh, do you have a school that you're in? I hope that you're able to be customized. Because if you're not, this is kind of pointless. Yeah, I don't know if you can be customized. Because wizards, they get their like customization right away. And it doesn't really say. So we're going to go ahead and venture forth. Hopefully, I can customize you. And these things have stayed interesting. Okay, so it's level two. I guess it was level one for the uh, clerics and such. But I feel like you'd be able to select the cleric thing. And for you, I'd like transmutation so I can get the alchemy going. For spells, it really, really does not matter what I use for spells. Uh, find familiar and jump. Who cares? Because we're not going to use you in combat at all. You're just going to be around to be an alchemist. And you're pretty much already, like, done with what you need to do anyway. We just need you at level 2 to unlock the alchemy perk. So that we can go into crafting. How are you losing... Like, no one is seeing you. Okay, what is the button? Is it... Sorry. I don't know what button it was to do the alchemy doesn't really show it either. So, potions. Uh, go ahead and extract all. Okay, alchemy patch. Pouch. We don't really have much, actually. So, why don't we just leave you in camp for now? I thought I had a lot more. But I guess I haven't been picking stuff up. This vessel is at thy disposal. Do what thou wilt. This soul remembers its invective but remembers not its tongue. Though spoken with a different voice, you recognize the eloquent drawl of Withers, the wraith that summoned the hireling. They are but echoes. They recall not a manner of speech. Thus I lent them my rhetoric. Again, surprised you have nothing better to do. Why do the hirelings need to speak? Yeah, we're gonna to do speak this thusly one. takes little of my effort. Besides, what better use is there of time than discourse? So through this, technically Withers is a companion, technically, because all the hirelings would be controlled by him, like a puppet, I guess. Because you needed to speak to it. 
because it feels correct, fitting. I know there was a lot of confusion whenever the game announced that they were having hirelings, if they were customizable characters, or how they were going to work or not. So, yeah, it's an interesting approach to it. These souls clawed their way back from the fugue plane for vengeance. The art of violence is one memory not lost to them, I assure you. Now, let us return. Okay, and you can stay in camp. This vessel is at thy disposal. Do what thou wilt. Thou art the master. And I guess they just hang out wherever. Taking up a spot in the camp. I don't want to have you in the party. Yes. Don't leave. And now we're going to go ahead and do a long rest. Because we haven't had a single rest since we started. And we've kind of been tapped out for a while now. I could go longer. Especially if I had like a warlock. Because warlocks just regenerate this stuff after each short rest. And he has Watch your back. a really nice feature. Once per long rest, you can just get a short rest. So... That's uh, basically like a third long oh, rest, or to, sorry, thanks. a third short rest that we could have with every single bard that we have. With that. So go ahead and sleep. But there are some interactions I need, like this. I was curious if Will would show up in my camp. Hi, Will. How you doing? Hmm. Karlak. The stink of Avernus. Will, the stink of a, a pig. I figured he'd show up. Blade of uh, Frontiers is a man of his word. Give it up already. I'm not the monster you think I am. I'm gonna go with this one. I know exactly what you are. Zariel's... A great fire roars through you. The fire of the hells you've escaped. You are the Blade of Frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a familiar figure. Red skin, single curled horn. Blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held high. Infernal soldier, Zariel's lick spittle. I will not let you burn the sword coast to ash. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt anyone, and I'm uh, certainly no devil. Uh, the shits are for shit's shake. Sorry, ugh, words. Uh, yes, I serve Zariel. Uh huh. You want to fight? Let's. Okay. Lies, lies, lies! I... Seriously, just get over it, dude. He sees through your eyes. You slice through one devil after another, Zariel's servants, as your eyes dart around, seeking escape. The man shudders with your desperation and sees the naked truth. You are a victim of the blood war, not an agent of it. By Baldron's helm, I... No! I will not be tricked! Hey, you saw the truth? I'm not a danger to the coast. Be practical. We're infested. Same. Yeah, okay. You're a problem. Yeah. He catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. <sighs> Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Yeah, you have. I can only hope you won't have to find out. Truce? Absolutely. Stormy introduction aside, might I suggest a partnership instead? The Blade of Frontiers would make a formidable ally. Yeah, great idea. You can join us. Find a cure. I've not grown any tentacles yet, thank Baldron. But luck won't be on our side forever. You seem like a good crew. Yes, you have my blade. Not to mention a thousand sorries. I see the good in you, Karlak. I promise not to lose sight of it, even when the hells burn hottest. Hm. The famous Blade of Frontiers in the flesh. Clever, this hero act you've got going. Hero, Blade, name strangers gave me. My friends call me Will. Excellent. If we ever become friends, I'll know what to call you. Alright, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I was curious how they'd handle that. Now, they could have pretty much taken care of that back at the Druid camp. Honk, honk. 
but it's whatever. I'm not gonna complain too much. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. So, who set you on my tail? You're not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to your throat, Karlak. One night soon when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. Yeah, you will. You're not in any danger, I promise. I can't say the same about me. Well met. My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Hmm. Proud. No. Angry. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. So yeah, in first edition, the whole, like, good gods tolerating stuff was total nonsense. The entire plot of the original, like... Dungeons and Dragons were like gods and mortals that were serving them fighting an eternal like feud Essentially the mortals were pawns of the gods directly So like the good gods would basically punish either other good gods the neutral gods or the evil gods And it was just a constant cycle of uh, war. So that's one thing that kind of is lost with the new additions Baldur's Gate born and raised the only son of a single father. He wanted one life for me I chose another we haven't spoken since I left the city. A classic drama. <laughs> a staunch father and his rebellious son. Better heard from the bard's lips than mine. A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah. But that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. By all means. Okay, that's it for now. We are going to have him join us later. Uh, we'll probably kick Asterion out of the party to have him. The um, bardic inspiration and everything is useful, but having someone that can just outright fight right out of the way is also pretty useful. Now, I will mention, they changed his character dramatically. So, Will and Gale, they both had, like, massive character changes with the actual launch of the game. In early access, I won't say too much about Will, because there really wasn't... Not Will, uh, Gale. Because there really wasn't that much about Gale back then. But for Will, originally he was, like, trying to hunt down goblins. And his whole mission was kill goblins. Every go goblin he saw, he had a slate. He was basically like a goblin slayer. And he pretty much told us right away that this thing in his eye is actually a, um, a waystone. Not a waystone. I forget the, the term for it. A um, sending stone. It's where he can, like, communicate with his, like, patron. Because the whole warlock thing. So, they changed almost everything about him. So, that's one thing that's pretty interesting. And I think we should have a dog in camp tomorrow. Oh. Yep, there's the doggy. Go ahead and do speak with animals. Hope you're keeping well, friend. Master. Friend. I stayed with him until... Until I knew he was gone. I'll never forget him. But I'm glad to have met you. Easy approval with almost everyone. Alright. And you only get that once. With him. You get it with the owl bear as well if you add the owl Sir, bear. We're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. 
darling, I'm hurt. I, I, it sounds. And we're gonna add you. Carlack incoming. Because I don't really need to make well, any then. checks coming up. Any big checks. We just need That's combat. That's the spirit. So we're gonna go heavy into uh, Warlock for you right now until a certain point when I turn you into like a paladin or whatever. But that's gonna be way further and that's gonna be for like RP stuff that I'm not gonna get into. So for you, let's go ahead and get Hex, because Hex is really useful. And we're going to get the thing that lets you see in the dark. So let's see, you can now, nope, 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 where's the one for dark vision? There we go. So this actually lets him see in the darkness fields that I cast. Meaning, he can, like, shoot lightning bolts or whatever else from inside of there. Which makes him really, really powerful. Armor of the Shadows would give him magic armor as an extra thing. So, or mage armor as an extra skill that he could cast whenever he wants. Which is also nice because his AC is really low. And he's not actually allowed to wear certain things. Like, he can't wear helmets, for example. Because that interferes with his casting. So... He's got, like, several restrictions when it comes to what gear he can wear, so something like this is decent. It's not the most useful thing, because, well, you don't actually have to play him as a melee character. Even though he's built as a melee character, you can just respec him to be whatever you want, because, like, that strength, that dex, all that stuff is really low. RP reasons, he wants to be in the front. He doesn't need to be, though. Let's go ahead and go for this one, though. Being able to push enemies back with Eldritch Blast is extremely potent. Like, in the Underdark, for example, there's a certain enemy that can, like, do a bunch of nonsense to you up high in the air. It's, um, basically a beholder. It's actually a spectator. But I actually one-shot this thing because of this repulsing blast. I accidentally pushed it off the cliff, and it landed on the cliff below us, and it took fall damage and just completely splatted it on the ground, and that was it. It was like, oh, okay, that's, uh, really nice. So, it's useful if you know when to use it. Now, one thing to mention, if you push an enemy out of a square, they will not actually uh, get an attack of opportunity. So, like, your allies, if they're surrounding them and you do that and push them away, none of your allies are going to be able to attack them for leaving that square. That's considered a force, like, move. So, just something to keep in mind. Okay, darkness would be good on you. Old person is really potent, because it just essentially paralyzes them and everyone gets, like, auto crits on them. So, it's pretty useful for that. Invisibility is useful. All these spells are useful. I'd say the most useful thing, though, would have to be... Possibly Crown of Madness. Because this can buy you a lot of time. If you can turn the enemies against each other, this can be really, really potent. But it's only for one humanoid enemy. And... Do they get a will save every single turn? Or is it just once? Yeah, Inspect doesn't do anything for me. Misty Step is also useful, but not too useful. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go for... Ah, this is a hard choice. I'm thinking Cloud... Crown of Madness. Because I already have access to Darkness on other characters. No one really has access to this. So we're gonna go for this. And as for the Boon... The Chains is pretty useful. It lets me summon an ally that can actually somewhat fight for me. The Blade is also really, really potent if you're going for a melee build, because you can summon your own weapon, and it lets you do extra stuff based on attack and, or sorry, strength and dex. But he's not built for that right now, so that's kind of worthless. So with this one, the Tome, a patron against you a Grimoire. Okay, Book of Shadows, which allows you to do Guidance, Vicious Mockery, and Thorn Whip. I mean, that's not the most useful thing. Having access to Guidance on another character could be useful, but I'm thinking the Chain for the whole, like, Imp. Because the turn invisibility is actually pretty useful. Having, like, access to Scout companions. Because, like, uh, things... Similar to that, so you'd have the the Mage Hand from the um, Arcane Trickster. They fixed it now. With this patch, they actually had it to where the Mage Hand will be a permanent thing whenever it comes to Arcane Trickster. Normal Mage Hand runs out after certain points, but Arcane Trickster, they have 
permanent mage hand that is technically invisible all the time, even though it can still be detected by normal NPCs. If you move stuff around, you actually get negative rep for the mage hand, which makes no sense. But this, his are also permanent, and they can just turn invisible. I think it might be once per day, but having access to something that can fly and all that and move stuff around, it's going to be interesting, and I'm going to respec him at some point, so I'm not going to get too bent out of shape if I'm not making the best choices here. Where am I needed? So you can still summon all these other things, too. And it's a ritual. Okay, so since it's a ritual, that's really not a big deal. Go ahead and summon you. And let's see what you can do. Is invisibility... It's a concentration until long rest. Interesting. However, I'm curious. If I turn you invisible right now... So it's until long rest. Oh, okay, so it's until long rest. I get it. So you can actually just do whatever you want. Um, go ahead and do that again. Okay, no, this this is this is like overpowered actually. Oh yeah, yeah, no, this this right here, this is broken. <laughs> this is broken. The fact that I can just do that whenever I want to. Yeah, that's Soldier. the right choice. That is actually the right choice. I'm glad I made that. Let's leave camp. We've done enough we like scouting here. here. I'm not going to give Will anything. He doesn't need anything. The most exquisite eyes, golden as the sands of the cavern. And you have a soft skull. A gaze tentacle will have no issue. Is that a compliment? No, it is a fact. Life in this fey room is laughably weak. All right, let's go. I can't wait for him to do the banter with Shadowheart and get turned down. Toast, toast. Collapsed burrow, nothing in there. So we're going down to the swamp right now. We're going to have a cutscene with Auntie Ethel right here. And I didn't actually interact with her at all. So I'm curious what happens. Please, we just want Marina back. Lads, for the love of all that is holy, I've never clapped eyes on your poor sister. Drop the act, hag. You was the last to see Marina. Just let her go. Please. You there? Please, I don't know what's come over these boys. I just want to go home. Stop this. We we won't ask again. Okay, um, how about you all calm down? What's going on here? Lower your weapon. She's just an old lady. I had nothing to do with this. Goodbye. Careful. Don't trust a word out of her mouth. Our sister went to the hag, and we ain't seen her since. Hand over heart, I don't know their sister. I will gladly help you all look for her, though. Enough. Where is she? I won't let you hurt this old woman. I'm not getting involved, tell the truth. What happened to the sister? Bollocks. You were supposed to rush to my defense, love. Fat lot of good you are. Some advice? You ever darken my door, you'd best have that head bowed and an apology at the ready. Bye bye now. Bloody hells. She just disappeared. Ain't seen nothing like that before. She could shoot fireworks out of her backside for all I care. The hug has Rina. Okay, good luck with that. Will someone please tell me what's going on? It's our sister, Marina. She's... well... She was in a bad way after her husband died. Started saying weird things, like how she was gonna bring him back. Next thing, she's gone looking for the hag. Of all the stupid things to do. And we haven't seen her since. And no good ever came from dealing with a hag. None of this matters, all right? We need to get her back, and fast! Okay, so we can actually try and go with them, but what ends up happening, they turn us down and they run ahead, and they end up getting killed. If I tell them that they're on their own, I have my own problems, they go out there, and I think they'll be fine. Or sorry, I'm sorry, I wish I, could, I wish you luck finding her. This will do the same thing as that one. So we're going to select this. Thank you. We'll need it. To hell's with that. We don't need... All right, and with this, they run off, and I don't Amazing. believe they actually die. Do you believe in love at first sight? I hardly believe in love at all. Oh. But I do believe in carnal pleasure. Oh. Let's see if we can find something over here. 
not that. Uh, there should be a knot in the tree here. One of these trees has an item for me that I really need. Nope, we're gonna fail the check. Okay, we'll have to come back for this with another character. I'm not gonna waste time trying to reload that. It's a really high check, so oh, it's gonna be hard to find. How blessed I am to be so near. I heard you with Lazel. Don't think I'll play second fiddle to the likes of her. Go try your charms on someone who's out of earshot. There we go. That's the cutscene I wanted. Yeah, the banter is still really um, common. They needed to space nice. it out some more. This patch kind of ruined the uh, the spacing for the banter. Because now they're going to have pretty much nothing to say. They uh, they blew their load, in a way of speaking. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We should have a interaction up here to see what this what is. Chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. Investigation. Hopefully we pass this. If we don't, it's not a big deal. Now we're not gonna pass it. We can try and guidance this. Or sorry, um, inspiration this. Keep going. Maybe we get lucky. One more attempt, and then I'm gonna reload, because I don't wanna blow them all. Yeah, we're gonna reload. So what happens here is it changes the world around you, and it would be nice to get this. It would be really, really nice to get this check, not because it lets you see what the world is really. What it does is it actually gives you a bunch of influence with all the characters. Just a bunch of influence with all of them, and it's kind of, uh, I guess, somewhat hidden info, because normally, like, you see red caps up ahead. They're going to be there, like, just patrolling the area. And wondered what people will say, Will. You go up here. When they find out the monster hunter is becoming a monster. Hopefully you pass it because you Chill have the monk stuff. It's spine. easier for a monk to do this. You feel like you're being watched. Because they actually have this, the wisdom check. So, if you have a monk, just let, you, let it be known. This is the easiest way to pass it. A monk or a wizard. Now, that seems like it's a little cheaty, and I, like... Did that? I know, it is. I just wanted to get this taken care of so you can see this. You blink and the wilderness changes. A swamp, stinking and insidious, assaults your senses. Come on. All right, now that that's yourself. taken care of, I can actually oh, yeah. show what's going on. So yeah, we got one inspiration for that, so we would have gotten at least one back. That's a really high DC, all things considered. And there are traps all around us, but we're going to ignore those. Just don't step on any of the weird things. So this red cap right here. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by you get a lot of percept or a lot of influence. Talk to you. Diminutive creature sporting a red hat glares at you. You recognize the red cap, a fey creature known for its bloodlust. <laughs> that noise. Is the creature pretending to be a sheep? So yeah, we get like approval every time we do that. Again, this creature doesn't realize you. We only get like three of these, but it's kind of useful. All right, yeah, we only get two. Anyway, I've remembered like more people getting the approval. I might have had to bring Gale to get some from him too. But yeah, it's it's just one of those little things that you can miss out on if you don't realize that it's there. Because most people, I feel like, they would see the red caps and they'd immediately start attacking them. And it's a good idea to actually attack them because in a little bit they're going to just outright start attacking us. We're not going to do that cutscene right now. We are way, 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 way too under level to actually do that part. We're going to have to come back here at like level 5 before we can deal with the the hag just the play it safe front is, hmm? do you always need to be the center of attention anything but i don't fight to be flattered later hmm. i fight to save lives all right so i'm going to try something a little cheeky here just a little bit cheeky I actually jump back over here so this is normally a really difficult encounter because the enemies up here will constantly summon more ads. 
So we're gonna toggle group mode. Toggle group mode here. And everyone just stealth, stealth up. Activated. Alright, you. You have invisibility. So we're going to go ahead and use invisibility on you. And you're just stuck as invisible. So with that in mind, I should be able to just have you come in here. And you should be able to just take the thing without having any issues. Because these guys right here, they will summon essentially like infinite adds. What we need is here in the tree. I don't know if you will actually be able to get it though. Yeah, you're not actually able to perceive it. There's a book in the tree here, and that's what we need. So we can come up here and we can attempt to, like, I don't know, assassinate one of these guys. Get alone up here. So that started combat with you. And that costs an action to do that. However, we can just try and get away. So with this in mind, this makes this really, really potent. Super potent. Because we can just start every encounter with this character, essentially. And get everyone distracted. And technically speaking, we can summon like an infinite amount of these and just keep on doing that. So if you really want to cheese the game and make almost everything easy, I'm not going to do this because it's super time consuming. But for this certain encounter, we will try and distract them. Try and draw everyone over there. Oh, let's see. We could turn invisible again. Ends early if you attack, cast another spell. So if we do this, that will actually end combat with me. Because they won't be able to find me. Let's go up here. We're just going to use you as an actual grunt here. We won't do that cheese. Because to be invisible on demand, that just makes this even easier. I want to get them out of the roots, one thing. How much health do you have? Oh, you have 10. So you're not, like, even a normal familiar. You're really potent. This is overpowered, actually. I keep talking about how good this is, but... Yeah, these guys right here, summoning all their adds. I didn't want to deal with them over there because the adds actually explode whenever they die. And, uh, that's a big problem. That's a really big problem. So having them all, like, in one area kind of helps. Oh, he's close. Really close to dying. Oh, I should also mention, they actually increased the difficulty with tactician mode with the latest patch as well. So now that's taken care of, and everyone should be away from that, we could probably sneak in there and steal the thing without even getting in involved in the combat. I know this seems a little... A little, um... On the nose, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's not exactly the best way to do this. Quiet as a moonbeam. The problem is these guys don't give me any loot. So even if I beat them, I wouldn't actually get anything from them. Now the roots will unfortunately catch me. So this is just a little bit of espionage, I guess you could say. Is it gonna trigger? Can I get that this? The swamp tree. Yep, there you go. I reckon this is the one. Alright, so you're still stealth. Don't. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. Take this and go. Now we don't actually have to do this encounter unless we want to. The reason this is important is these guys just are kind of annoying to fight. And we don't have the AoE to deal with this. We can still fight them. We can still fight them. And we will fight them when we come back to the swamp, because this is easy XP, and there's no reason not to fight them, honestly. The, um, the little things that summon adds, they don't give XP, the adds don't, so they're a little annoying, so I'd need, like, a fireball or some AoE spell to deal with them real quick, but the rest are just fine, now that this is taken care of. Um, what do we want to do? Do we just want to turn invisible and call this? Because we can just turn invisible and then fly away, and that'll end combat. Yeah, this character is overpowered. Wow. See, I normally go, like, the blade route, so I actually never use the little summon like this. 
They're gonna go in, they're gonna investigate, and they're gonna get confused. And we just leave. And that's it. Combat's already ended. Yeah, super easy. We can just outright avoid combat when we don't need to. Okay, cool. Well, well. So I'll go group mode, so I'll go group mode, and let's go ahead and teleport back to the Druid Grove. Because I did say that there's gonna be combat. There is gonna be combat, just not with them. No, no. We're gonna sweat. fight in the Druid Grove. Uh -huh. There's something down here that I need to take care of. Something important for the quest. And I don't wanna be the topped prime. off, or I don't wanna be like under gear. So it might be a little bit of a, a fool's errand to go in there now. Heads nor hearts, I wouldn't quite say that. Come on, open the door. Jeez. I wish the teleport thing was inside, not outside. Anyway, if, do you have more to say? No? If we come in here and we deal with this, we will actually get a special fight that most people just completely forget exists. Because it's like if you don't go and snoop in people's chests and such, you won't actually know to do this. Like you saw there, the, um, the imp actually couldn't even see where the thing was just out of the gate. Go ahead and remove you as a summon so we can summon you again. The pride of the gate. Okay, so it's a short rest ritual. That's fair enough. Not a big deal. Come on. If you insist. Alright. Can make this really useful. So we can come over here now, and I hope we pass this fight, because this is going to be a little bit of a difficult encounter. Luckily, we don't have to do this alone, but it is going to be hard. Good, we have all those grouped up over there. Let's get over here. Are there any potions I can use right now? Holy water. I haven't really been looting anything. I need to, at some point, just start looting stuff, but I've been putting it off. This sword, what can I do with this? It's decent, but unfortunately there's no one that can really use it. I can send it to you. Yeah, you use a great sword though. Okay, whatever. Um, do you still... Yeah, you're proficient in that. I want to make sure everyone's wearing stuff that they can actually use before I do this, because unfortunately this might end up being one of those things where I have to keep on reloading. I sent you to Zevlor. What? Now these guys might Rochambeau me, but luckily we're gonna at least have help. And the help doesn't matter if it survives. I've already done a thing where all of them survive, it didn't change anything. He should survive though. Everyone else, it's whatever. That damn nose of yours has gone poking in our business. Mistress Ollerton, I can explain. Shh, shh. No need. It couldn't be helped. Koga, what is the meaning of this? You think yourself quite the spy, don't you? Go on, tell him. Okay, take this letter wrap. It will explain everything. Uh, she's a shadow druid meant to convert the circle. A shadow druid? Korga, have you lost your mind? You and Elsin welcome untouchables to your midst. You defile the grove for the sake of harmony. Oladin speaks truth. Who among you disagrees? Who would see this grove in ruin? The choice is made. Korga, burn the tainted away. Start with a snitch. As you say, Oladin. And we can do this to try and convince her. Shadows won't save you. They corrupt you. Take the grove. We won't stand in your way. Uh, probe her thoughts. We're going to try this. See, if we brought Asteria and we'd at least have, like, advantage and all this stuff, but... 
That's why we have so much of the um, inspiration. That's why I, I wanted to keep my inspiration. I, I burned through all of it there just so I could try and force that interaction no. before. You you don't know what you say. But I do my, need my inspiration In Shadow, for this. we are purified. You watch Kulga closely. If she is moved by your plea, she gives no sign. Okay, recite the stuff that you've read around the grove. I know these druids ways and you're in their hands. Yeah, okay. Shadows will only corrupt you. We just say the same thing again. Go for a history thing. Try to at least. Korga eyes you intently as you speak the text etched into the frescoes. By claw and tooth, from root to thorn, the old oak's grove to wildlings sworn. The forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. In darkest hour, a concord made, twixt harp and wild against the shade. The towers seized, the battle done, the moonrise broke the darkest one. When? When the darkest hour fell, it was us that brought light. Sylvanus demands we illuminate shadow, not hide within it. How was I so blind? Careful, Korga. The shadows don't forgive. I belong to the shadows no longer. You've no power over me. Or you would question my power. Mother Earth, hear me. Grant me your wrath. All right. Unfortunate that you get to go before me. Because I was just going to steamroll all of you. Good, you hit him and not me. Oh boy, a moonbeam? Are you serious? Oh, that's powerful. Uh, sanctuary, we could do. Or we could just start hitting you. So you will actually transform. Can I, uh... I can't shove you. Can I throw you? Can I throw you... Off the thing? Nope. No, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna have to do that with one of them. Just, like, knock them off the platform. Make this the easiest for me. Let's see. Rin. No, no, no. Um, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Because you are annoying with the arrows, but you will transform. So I guess go for you. Alright, and I need to get right On the move. here. Let's see, what is your shove? So you actually have a lot of shove. So I could have actually shoved you. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead and silence right here. And hopefully that prevents you from doing what you were going to do. Okay, so you can still wild shape in silence. I I kind of figured as much, but it prevented you from casting any spells. And now that that's taken care of, we can get out of the silent zone. Now that he's a bear, it's going to be a little annoying to deal with him. Crown of Madness. Will that work on you? I know you have a high wisdom, so you're better off not doing that. Oh, wait a moment. I have a certain thing that's really nice. Let's see if it works. Nope, I missed. I was gonna try and push her off the thing. For another round. So for you, for you, we can just like go to town on you, I guess. Um, go ahead and do this. Unfortunately, she's got a moonbeam there, which is gonna make it really hard for me to actually deal with this. I was gonna like charge in there and knock her off the platform. Doesn't matter. We can do this instead. Now that you're on the ground, everyone should have advantage on you, so long as they're not range. You gonna do anything? No, you, you're all gonna count. Oh, thank you. That makes this easy. Alright, and now that that's taken care of, we can just go to town on you. 
you're out of the wild shape, but you're going to get another one next turn. Or we can just outright kill you. Try to, at least. Come on, take damage from the Moonbeam. Yeah, Wild Shape is really overpowered. I'm not a fan of it. Let's see, can we... No, there's not a particular way I can do that, unfortunately. Can I shove you? Not very far. Oh, what was that? Like, the numbers keep going all over the place. That's crazy. Anyway, I'm gonna knock the throne. Give everyone advantage on the next attack. Oh, Will got knocked down. Oh well, who cares? She really does not like Will. Like, what is up with that? She just keeps focusing him. Goodbye. No time to waste. Can't give up. Not now. And silence, and go ahead and I don't know, just hit her. Oh wow. Oh wow. That was a lot of damage. I was not expecting that. We're gonna save before combat's over because I don't know if she talks to us as soon as this is over, and I want to make sure she's talking to the right person. Oh, goodbye. Was that the person we saved? I don't remember. No, that was the other person. That was the random person that um, hates us. So we could save everyone in here. It doesn't matter, though. Fleet of foot. Go time. Soldier. One thing I don't like, the fact that you can't revive people that are downed. If they're like allies, it's one thing, but like the NPCs, for some reason, they don't let you do that. Just go for a shot, I guess. Could you just not? Yeah, the entangle kind of messes stuff up. Just saying. I don't think I can push her if she's entangled. Uh. Is this difficult terrain or something? Because I'm not getting very far. Ready. Oh, it is. It's it's considered mud. That's annoying. Uh. Oh, thank you. So, let's go ahead and just out blast you right off the cliff. Oh, please. There we go. Easy fight is easy. Running out. Um, yeah, it is. You want to not die? Okay, you died. Fantastic. I, could go for a good meal. I thought I had a potion on him. I would have healed him. Easy enough. And we can't loot his body because it's considered theft. But we can loot all the other ones. Not that. The druids of this get, grove get out of that. This land. Try to loot the body. Send this to camp. And it's worthless. I will accept it in full. No! Can you get that moonbeam off the body? I'm worried that this is gonna hurt me really, really bad if I touch it. Yeah, they don't have any loot, so it actually is fine to just throw them off the cliff, considering how hard this fight can be. We'll talk to you and wrap up the episode. Wrath thought me a danger. Seems I've proven him right. I betrayed Sylvanus himself. Led the circle to shadow. We will stop the right. Then I will stand trial. My fate lies with the Tree Father. May he have mercy. All right. And what about uh, Zevlor's people? We will grant them safe harbor until they depart. Meanwhile... Help us contend with the goblins. Perhaps we can dissuade them from attacking. Yep. And how did they even find you? It began with a letter. There was no messenger. It simply appeared. Oladon came soon after. An army was coming, she said. Goblins, drow, and more still. Legions upon legions. The druids of Cloakwood knew the dangers this would bring. 
They ordained that all circles cast the right to shelter from the storm. Oladin taught me to harness the Tree Father's power to wall us in. In return... Well, you know the rest. I would turn the grove over to them. I won't forget the wounds I've inflicted. I pray Halsin returns to heal them in full. Alright. Uh, do you have anything to buy? You do not. It's just a good berry that you're selling for nothing. So I'll take the good berry off you. Or not. Okay. And we can talk to the doggo, and the doggo should be happy with us, but not really. You have saved Korga from herself. I cannot thank you enough. You have nothing else to say? I hope to, to see Halsin, please. Yeah, nothing. You cannot cast spells silenced? I'm not silenced. I see it. Uh, another stranger come to vex me. What will you do? Hunt me? Grab my tail? Shout until my head hurts? No, wait. You smell fresh. Safe. You can stay. If you must. So if you don't have animal handling or speak with animals, this is kind of a weird interaction. Nothing ever happens with it, but you pretty much can never get the approval of the dog unless you have speak with animals. Like, if you're a tiefling trying to talk to him with just animal handling, he'll see your tail, and he'll hate you just because you have a tail, because he's worried about all the other tieflings. And you can also talk to him and find out that he hates being hunted by random strangers, and the random strangers are these shadow druids, the rats or whatever, saying that they're just hiding in plain sight, and that's supposed to be a little bit of a clue that something weird is going on. I just wanted that so I could get the approval for all the characters that were in the party about that. Because it's uh, nice to get the approval, easily. Oh, one other thing that they fixed with the patch. The, uh, the Loche painting, or Liza, what is her name? Sharp as ever. I don't think I have it on me. Anyway, her painting, Lose, Lose. Her painting, they made it to where you can actually reach it now. So, I didn't have to do that box thing. Oh well. I hear you brought Koga back from the brink. My thanks. But what about your other mission? Any word on Master Halson? He and the adventurers. Master Halson studied that. Okay. And we're going to wrap up the episode here. Next time, we're going to steal the idol that's out there. But we have to talk to Maul first. Maul actually wants that, and I actually haven't picked up the quest from Maul to give that to her. They don't need the idol anymore, so they don't care about it. Everyone's just going to be gathered around. They're not going to be casting the warding spell on it, so it's really easy Whatever to steal. Comes, All I have to do I'm is ready. cast a darkness on that. And okay, I can just walk up and time, take the Nettie. thing, because they can't see me. I could also Defender potentially steal people. it using his summon, but both of them are going to require a short rest in order to cast this. She needs two key points for that. But that's going to be next time. After that, I think we're going to go ahead and head into the goblin camp and get stuff proceeded from there, because we've rested now. The owlbear should have moved over to the goblin camp. I should probably go ahead and make that spear next time, too, because the owlbear's mother should be dead at this point, so I can get the spearhead, and I can go back and get the spear body from the body that I left on the ground, not realizing I didn't loot. But the spear is kind of worthless. I'll put it on her just to have it. That'll be next time. So, yeah, this is Krim signing out. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.